Marine Canvas and Upholstery The canvas will keep your boat protected from the elements, and well done upholstery can be what really sets off and completes a project. I began to learn this process with a used industrial machine. The frustrating maintenance and repair of this machine eventually drove me to buy a new one. I'm so glad I did. Learning how to do this work is hard enough. I quickly realized that I didn't want to also become an expert on old sewing machines. The new machine paid for itself quickly. I can't afford the repeated high cost of this work on each new boat project I do, not to mention actually finding somebody to do it. But if I could do a good job of it myself and a few repairs for other people along the way, my needs would be met at a cost I could afford. Indulge me as we enjoy seeing the results of this process in Unbeknownst for just a bit longer. Then we'll move even further back to last June when the work was actually done. Season 4, Episode 11, Upholstery. My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat, arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this. The Wooden Boat Experience. A man who thought about it a bit may have decided to make his first upholstery project simple. I decided instead on complicated and drew up this plan. The drawing was important to help keep the parts in order. Cutting the base foam. This is three inch thick, high density foam. It's going in the seats of unbeknownst. And then we've got some two inch there that'll go on the backs. Using just an electric carving knife works really good. The electric knife worked okay, but some of the edges weren't quite square. So since then, I bought one of these. It's not easy to do, film this with one hand and cut with the other and hold the foam up. But it shows you how good that cut is. Okay, I got this foam laid out. Here's the stripe on this side. Blue, white, blue, blue, white, and blue. You can see this stripe is going to be 10 inches wide. This one's going to be 6 inches wide. That's finished size. You've got to make it a little bigger because you got a, a hem there. So this is the front seats. Those are the backs. This is the part you sit on right here. So next we're going to cut some material. That's the scary part. You may ask, did you just create the drawing and get right into it? Not at all. I bought the supplies for this project from SailRight.com, but their video on how to make a cushion led to the actual success. I'm glad I didn't have to pay for every time I watch parts of this video because I referred to it again and again. You can find the link to this video below in the description of my video. Thanks to SailRight because I'm not sure I would have gotten this far without This video is brought to you by SailRight. Visit SailRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Eric Grant with SailRight. Today we're going to be making this box. I made the front panels. Next, I'll make what's called the boxing panels, which go here, except for the one side which has a zipper, which on this one will be this one here, and on the bottom it'll be on the back. There's a detail. Uh, put the center stripe in of white, hemmed it, but then flipped it over and put a nice white uh, 
sewing threads right there. That looks a little weird, but I think that's a nice detail. Almost looks like it's skipping there. Better take a look at it. Well, I was moving right along and then I realized this piece right here is not wide enough. So I got to pull all that out, not the piping, but this piece right here, it was matching up pretty good there too. And I got to pull that out and make a new one. It needs to be three and a half, not three inches. Otherwise the foam is not going to fit in there. Back to it. These corners are not fun. Piping looks great, but it makes the whole job a lot harder. I'm not talking to anybody but the camera spec, don't worry. The corners get a lot worse once I'm putting all the pieces together. When I start adding this boxing to this, then it becomes even more difficult. But I'm getting better at it. This Janome is a great machine, but I wish it had a foot that went over the piping. You want to go outside, buddy? Don't disappear, okay? So we're doing what they call basting this together so that I don't have to hold it together. This kind of holds it in place, this double stick tape. It doesn't affect anything afterwards, so it's fine to have it on there in the long run. It's an awful lot to keep in place and to keep track of without the help of this. And this stuff, this is four-way stretch I think it's called I think it's called four-way stretch so if you're not careful you start manipulating this fabric without even knowing it while you're sewing it and pretty soon you got it all stretched out of whack so I'm gonna just base this side we'll go and sew this we'll come back and base the other side I find it easier for me that way this side has been sewn you can see if we flip it it's always face to face and now we've come around this corner a little bit, but we're gonna baste down this side now. Being very careful that the corners match up here. And I know if the corners match up, then I haven't stretched it to get in place. This is double stick tape, what they call basting tape from Sailrite. I don't like to use it on everything because it kind of gums up the needle in the machine, but it is very handy for what I'm making here, which is called a uh, zipper plaque. So first I'll make two halves folded over like this, and then I cut off a piece of this zipper, and the halves will go here and here. And then I'll sew them right down here so they'll be the blue will be over there and over there. And then that's what forms the area on the back of the cushion where you take the you can take the um, actual foam part in and out of the cushion. Got the double stick basting tape on each side of the zipper. 
this isn't the coil type zipper I forget what this is called but it's not the coil type the coil type has a front and a back this zipper it doesn't matter you can put it in on both sides Should have done one side at a time so my fingers weren't sticking to this thing every time I turn around. And the other side's easy because you just bring it right against the first one. Now we'll go to the machine and sew this in place. Okay, I'm running really low as you can see on white thread here Some is coming later today, but I really want to get this done. So I was using blue thread on both sides For the parts where you couldn't see it where it didn't matter But here you can see the stitching on the front So I'll put the white thread back in You always reverse at the end and that keeps the thread from unraveling. Now you can see that there's white stitching there. Blue on the bottom, which is fine. You can't see the bottom. So let's try this other foot. Kind of a kind of a plastic foot. It's supposed to be more slippery. Let's see if that helps keep it going. That's way better. Now we separate this and here's a little pull. Fat end goes to in there first. You can see it zips. Now we'll go about halfway and just leave the pull there, and then after we sew it in, we can go all the way with it. So there is. A finished zipper plaque. And there's the back side. All right, let's go get the rest going. Okay, this is a driver's seat cushion. My first attempt at making a cushion. It's not perfect, but I don't think it's too bad. Can't wait to try sitting on it. Got a little bit of a wrinkle right there. Need some work, but for a first attempt, not bad. This piece right here is what holds the snaps. It goes along the back side, but it's actually, it's attached that, to this. I've actually got to pull this, the threads out of here and put it between the piping and the backing. But it's supposed to be the other way. So when you make it, it just looks like this piece, but when I uh, hemmed it, I hemmed the wrong side. So I had to make another one. This one's wrong. That one gets uh, put in the pile of, hey, you're not too smart. And this one will be right. So I'll base this one over to this line, put a hem on here and make it look like this one looks right here. Oh, you gotta pay attention when you have all these stripes and everything. If I had just had this one solid piece of blue, that never would have happened. But I don't think it would have looked as good. Here are all the parts that go into a cushion. So, the heck is that on there? Huh, a little grease or something. So this is the part that's gonna have snaps put on it that will go on and hold it onto the deck. 
So this is the back, and this would be the inside of the back. And then you have the front, which obviously looks like the front. And then you have the boxing. Here's the zipper plaque. That goes along the bottom side. This is a side piece here. And then this one goes, oh, wrong way, it goes this way. Zipper plaque, this is a side, here's this across here. That gets attached to both this and this. And there's the foam that goes in between. Simple, right? This is the hardest part of sewing this together because it gets real thick. And you've gotta put this face to face, sew all the way around here, and then you have to do the same thing sewing it onto the back. And that's what I'm gonna go do now. So here it is all sewn together. I'm gonna put you guys up here and I'm going to turn it right side out. First open up the zipper. This part hasn't been zipped yet. This part is zipped back. Check the corners to make sure they're sewn properly because that's the trouble spot. It's hard to keep it close around the corners. Battery died, I had to switch it up. So let's continue. Anyway, the corners are the trouble spots. So you always check those to make sure that they got sewn properly. Now it's right side out. Now the fun part, I'm trying to wrestle this foam in here. You would think it'd be fairly easy, but it's really not. starts out okay, then as you try to get it in here and get it flat, sometimes you have to do some manipulation. You got to be careful of how the seams are sitting that they're all the same, in the same direction, otherwise you'll see wrinkles. And I'm not an expert. And this is the first interior I've done, but I would highly recommend that you go to the SaleRight website, and I'll have a link below in the description, and watch the video that I watched to learn how to do this, because they have good videos that will teach you how, how to do it. This is not a how-to video. It's just kind of showing you that I did it and the results. This is not something I'd want to do for a living. It is not easy to do. And I see why they charge a lot of money for it. But it is something that I'm going to continue to do for myself. And I kind of like the seat back. You can see there's a little air in there. I kind of like that to puff. So once I see if this is laying flat, I'm probably going to add some of this batting here. This stuff I'll add into here to puff this out and to take these wrinkles out. Okay, you don't need to watch me wrestle with it. I'll show you the end result. I've got to adjust that one right there. You can see there's a couple little lumps. Just needs a little adjustment of the foam. There's the other back seats. The cushions are done. 